Eagle River, Wisconsin, 1992. This is the site of the most prestigious event in oval snowmobile racing. The Midwest was dealt one of the coldest weather snaps of the season during this third week of January. They call it Derby Week in this northern Wisconsin community of 1500. The population can swell to over 20,000 during championship Sunday afternoon. This year, however, the cold weather kept a few folks home and encouraged the already hardy fans who did make it to the track to bring a little extra protection from the elements. Just as in 1991, the Friday of Derby Week featured the Can-Am Challenge. The top five Canadian and top five American Formula One racers are determined through a series of elimination heats. These 10 finalists then race 10 laps for the highest team point total. The winning country earns bragging rights and each racer shares in the payoff. And away we go. And a good start that it is. As they go into the corner, we see Decker and Decker in there. It's Chuck on the inside, and he'll come out of number two, leading. Chuck on the inside, Allen on the outside, one and two. Jacques Villeneuve trying to creep up in there, and you see the Viseres doing likewise. Chuck's been running really good all weekend so far. Chuck Decker is leading, Allen Decker is second, and then it's a real jam up in there. You've got Fenhaus on the inside, Gary Viser and Jacques Villeneuve. Then it's Greg Goodwin. Then I see Bruce Viser, Chris Good uh, Grandolder right out there. Chuck and Allen running one and two, a big tie up in number three. Jock Villeneuve trying to squeeze by Al Fanhoff on that number four corner. And Chuck again taking a very high line into number one. He can afford to do that because he's got a little more room and he's getting a cleaner shoot when he goes into number two. All 10 sleds still on the track. Chuck and Allen one and two, and now you see Jack sliding out a little bit. Gary Vassar trying to hold him off. And now Dale Ritz uh, trying to move up a little bit. It's Chuck and Allen, Gary Vassar, you see Jacques moving around a little bit. Al Fenhaus is in fifth. Chuck Decker pulling away a little bit. Chuck's opening up a nice lead here. He's been running strong yesterday and all day today. Chuck Decker, Alan Decker, Gary Vassar, Jacques Villeneuve, Greg Goodwin, and now Dale Loritz is moving right up on Goodwin. Dale Loritz is moving up a little bit as you see him cramping it down on the inside. He's getting even with Goodwin. And he'll go right by him into corner number three. And now he'll make his move on Jacques. Chuck Decker is still our leader. Alan Decker running second. It's Gary Vasser in third. Jack Villeneuve in fourth. Dale Ritz in fifth. And we're halfway through. This is a 10-lap final. Formula One racing. The Can-Am shootout. The Americans hold the edge. 126 to 78. And now you see Vasser moving up on Alan Decker. Jerry Vassar is now even with Alan Decker in second, and he's passing him in the corner, and Jacques is fourth. Dale Loritz trying to get up on Jacques now, and he has done it. Jerry Vassar is now running second to Chuck Decker, Alan Decker in third, and Dale Loritz closing on him. Chuck is our leader, Jerry is second, and we've got three men battling for third. Dale Loritz is taking on third place now. And he's going to get to, I think, on Vassar. Look at him go. Dale Loretz is really closing the gap on Gary Vassar right now. Chuck Decker still our leader. Gary Vassar and then Dale Loretz, followed by Jacques Villeneuve and Al Benhaus. And we've got Chuck coming up on the last lap. Dale Loritz only about a length and a half behind Gary Vassar. We've got one lap to go, one lap to go. Chuck Decker, our leader, and Dale Loritz is second. Loritz and Vassar now are going to battle for that second spot. This means a lot to the Americans if Dale Loritz comes in second. We'll try and catch all ten places for you. Here's the winner, Chuck Decker. Dale Loritz is second. Jerry Vassar is third, Jacques Villeneuve is fourth, Fenhaus is fifth, Goodwin is sixth, Bruce Vassar seventh.
Saturday of Derby Weekend is a preview to the championship finals that will follow on Sunday. Sunday's finals begin with the modified classes and the Mod 1 final. And a good start for Nicholson. Eric Nicholson got off the line in very good form, and away he goes on the inside corner. We've got a Whoa. few slides, and Nicholson gets stalled sideways, and that gives us a new leader. And we'll pick him out as he gets a little bit closer, one of those Articats. Chad Lofton looks to be in second place at this time. He got off to a good start, too. Nicholson has a little ground to make up now as he comes back. That's Daryl LaPlante from Waverly, Minnesota. Lofton and Ed DeVault. Ed DeVault moving high around number one. LaPlante has been strong throughout the weekend, and he's right up there again. All sleds still moving. We got one dragon behind. It might go out. Chad Lofton still holding that second place from Ed DeVault. But DeVault coming on the outside, trying to pass in the straightaway, getting a little bit closer. DeVault will try and cut down in front of him if he gets a chance. DeVault does it right there, but not enough speed. And uh, you see Lofton pulling away. Visibility somewhat reduced this weekend, but the drivers don't seem to be affected by it yet. Our leader is Daryl LaPlante from Waverly, Minnesota. He's the top point standings guy in USSA. We're halfway through this race. This is Mod Stock 1, our third final of the day. Chad Lofton doing a good job taking a low line around the corners and holding on to that second place position. He's making Ed DeVault work a lot harder to get around the corner. You bet. Ed's trying a little higher line, trying to maintain his speed through the corner. But Chad doing a good job getting it down low. His sled working very well in the corners. DeVault has further and further to go now. He's getting further behind with that high line. That's, That's right. Ed DeVault running third. And if anything, Chad may be catching our leader, number 54. Daryl LaPlante. He's gaining a little bit. Daryl seems to be having a little sled problem in that back stretch. Chad. Lofton trying to narrow the gap. Of course, Chad is the son of Charlie Lofton, the world's famous uh, Arctic Cat factory race driver. Daryl LaPlante the leader. Chad Lofton in second. Ed DeVault is in third. Eric Nicholson picking his way back. Eric should be moving into fourth position. He's battling with Jared Peterson right now. You see Darrell LaPlante with one lap to go. Still our leader, Chad Lofton is second. Ed DeVault is third. In fourth right now, that's Bobby Benny. Nicholson is fifth. And Darrell LaPlante makes his way into the north end of the track. And he'll come around three into four as the leader. And he is going to win mod one. Waverly, Minnesota's Daryl LaPlante is in as first place driver. Chad Lofton takes second. Ed DeVault comes in third. Fourth belongs to Nicholson. Fifth to many. Brian Schultz gets the inside corner as they go to number one. Oh. Two spinning out, and look out, a sled going right up on top. Oh. Driver up on top, his arms are up, he's in good condition. The other driver involved in the spin out was able to recover and continue on the race. Ted still has a green flag out. And Brian Schultz is our leader right now. That's Glenn Knoll running in second. Darrell LaPlante running last right now. I didn't get a good look at who that was that went up in the corner. No, I couldn't sight either. Again, this should be a seven-lap race. Mark Goldmeyer is running fourth right now, and you start to see some moves made by LaPlante to come back. Schultz is the leader. Glenn Knoll is running in second. Bobby Menny is third. Goldmeyer is fourth. LaPlante is up there, and Steve Four. Well, I think we lost to Ulan Camp. Camp. Yeah, must be Kevin Balsam. There's Daryl LaPlante running last. Robert Balsam, I believe, went out, too. Here's our leader, Brian Schultz, halfway through. Glenn Knoll running second. Now there's Kevin Ullenkamp right there. Okay. Ullenkamp has come back strong, and he's running third. 
We'll keep our eyes on Brian Schultz, the leader. We got another sled dying right out there. Here's Brian Schultz, he's our leader. Running second, that's Glenn Knoll. Running third is Kevin Ullenkamp. Sparky Goldmeyer is fourth, Bobby Many is fifth, Steve Forer is sixth. They'll come around, number four, no change. Plenty of breathing room for Schultz. Again, the, the sleds and drivers are spread out on this track. There should be no visibility problem at this time. Glenn Knoll is trying to make up some room on Brian Schultz, but I don't think he's going to have enough time to do it. One lap remaining as they come down here. Heading to the straightaway. There's a battle for fourth. Schultz is the leader. Glenn Knoll running second. Kevin Ullenkamp is running third. And we see as these more powerful machines come out here and start racing, the corners are starting to get a little bit more bumpy as the day progresses. Bobby Many running in fourth. Steve Four in fifth. Joel Meyer sixth. And coming down here to get a checkered flag, here's Brian Schultz on an Articat from Marcazan. Glenn Knoll is second, Ulan Camp is third. Heading to the middle, Daryl LaPlante is number 54. You see Steve Hool on the outside. And that's got to be Brian Sturgeon taking the lead. With Steve Hool following close behind, going a bit higher into turn number three. Brian Sturgeon leading him out of number four, but there's Steve Hool right inside of him. We've got a race going here. Here, oh, Brian Sturgeon having engine failure or something, coasting into turn number one. Look out, Brian, look out. Found the brakes just before he found the bales, but he's done. Steve Hool is not. That leaves Steve Hool with a comfortable lead in first place. Daryl LaPlante is running second. Useldinger trying to move up now. You'll see some strong racing. 64 out there is Shane Wall. And you see Chad Lofton trying to move up a little ways. Guy Useldinger running fourth at this time. Bad break for Brian Sturgeon running in first position and having some Look sort of a Look out, a collision. That's that just knocked out. Guy Useldinger. Chad Lofton. Look out, Shane. Mark Rush just collided with him back here. And Ted's red flag this race. We have five laps, fifth lap in. So we should have two remaining laps. Right. right. This is a seven lap final, and Ted's ready to throw that flag, and we're off. Okay, Steve Hool picks up where he left off, going right into the corner, and Hool's still our leader. And of course, it gives these other guys who are back always a chance, LaPlante and Wall racing now, LaPlante trying to hold on to second. Shane Wall goes flying right by him, and he's got his sights set on Steve Houle. And again, it allowed him to close the gap on Steve Houle. Steve not allowing it himself, though, as he blazes out in front. Steve running extremely hard into that turn. We had heard earlier this morning that he had bruised a rib in qualifying yesterday. We got a sled down, look out. One machine upside. It wasn't Guy this time. Mark Rush again collided with that sled, and the driver is down Drive and not getting up. We've got a down driver out there. Driver still down, slowly getting up. Ted's red flagging it again. Still slow, but he is getting up. The sled was not on top of him. Ted's got the driver's position. And I believe we've got another three or four laps to go. We're gonna start again. Steve Holt. And you see Shane Wall and Dave, or uh, Daryl LaPlante, they're still battling for that second spot and everybody's right back into it. And again, Mark Resch on the inside, the big guy in pink. And Steve Hool still has a commanding lead over the other drivers. And he's still got exceptional uh, breakaway speed here too. Steve Hool the leader. Shane Wall running second, Daryl LaPlante running third. And right in behind them looked like uh, Brian Sturgeon possibly. You know, he went out early, didn't he? Yeah, Brian went <laughs> out first part of the But the race right now is for third position. It was Steve Hool way out front. Steve a little sideways in that turn number four. Steve is still our leader. That's Shane Wall in second, Daryl LaPlante in third. That is Brian Sturgeon. 
Brian, sure enough, Brian got back into Brian it. Brian was able to get his machine restarted. And he's able to try and challenge now for that third spot against Daryl LaPlante. And he's racing right alongside of him. Oh, and Steve, Steve Hull side, sideways again, turn number four, able to recover from that. He's One lap to go. Steve Hull is probably thinking, just let me hang on here. Just let me hang on. Steve, Steve Hull has that gap narrowed a little bit. Shane Wall really chasing hard. Steve Poole really pulls out a good out of turn number two, but having a big problem the last two laps. Right about here, keep an eye on him, getting sideways. No problem this Slowed time. Slowed it down a little bit to square it up, and Steve Hull will finally win. Mod Stock three, Shane Wall is second, Brian Sturgeon third, Daryl LaPlante fourth, Mark uh, Chad Lofton is fifth. With the mod finals behind us, we venture into the first of the super modified classes, the Formula 250 Championship. These machines have a maximum engine size of 250 cc. Kirky and Colin right up there, one and two. Everybody negotiating the corners quite well. Actually, the snow dust is not as bad as we thought it could be. Unless you're the last place sled, and you can see how much he slowed down. Gerke is the leader. Joe Calden running second. Bob Royston is running third. Dino Bailey on the inside looking for fourth. And that's Royston holding on to the third slot right now. He's all the sleds still running. All the sleds have spread out quite well, so we don't have many of them bunched up, so the drivers are able to see pretty decently. Herman Gerke and Bill Calden working on that top spot. Gerke owns it right now. Calden a little ways back on the outside. Bob Royston is third. Dino Bailey on the inside. Kevin Zachary behind him a little ways. All sleds still running. Bailey trying to make up some ground and get into fourth. It's Gerke and Calden leading out of the third turn. We see the sleds bumping a little bit as they enter the corner, but nothing like yesterday. So the Deckers have done a great job preparing this track for today's racing. We're halfway through this race. Herman Gerke is still our leader. Bill Calden trying to stay right with him. This is Formula 250. Gerke and Calden, one and two. Bob Royston is third. Gary Norris now moving up on Kevin Zachary, and he's bowing out. Zachary is pulled to the inside. Herman Gerke continues to lead. Beard is running second. Or Gordon McDonald, I should say, is running in third. And again, these sleds have spread out down this back straightaway, so the drivers shouldn't have much problem with visibility at all. Gerke, Calden, Royston, McDonald. Gerke, the leader, almost from the opening start. He got out of the corner in the best shape. Joe Calden had a little trouble. Now he gets it going again. Royston is third. McDonald is fourth. Bailey is fifth. Herman Gerke comes down off number four with one lap remaining in Formula 250. Joe Calden still running second. Bob Royston hanging on for third. And right now the battle is for fourth where Dino Bailey is pressing Gordon McDonald. McDonald on the outside, Bailey on the inside. Bailey passing from the inside and taking over fourth place. Here we come for the checkered flag. Ted's got the checkered flag out. And our winner will be number 131. Herman Gerke. Bill Calden is second. And that's Bob Royston in third. Probably the greatest variety in racing machines is seen in the stock class. These are straight from the dealer machines that have been fitted with the appropriate track cleats and carbide blades for ice oval racing. These manufactured machines are rated by performance, weight, and handling into five separate stock classes by the United States Snowmobile Association. Starting line, 
and we have him start. Ron Keel's been running pretty well in this group, and you'll see Jerry Deardall to his outside. Keel on the inside in the blue. That's Deardall going around him on the right in the green, and that's Deardall pulling out of the corner well, with a good start. Ron Keel Jr. with the top speed coming down that back straightaway. And Ron's been running pretty well throughout the weekend. He'll go a little bit higher. We'll see how these drivers attack that fourth turn. No real problems there. You see the machines switching in and out. And Ron Keel Jr. is the leader. That's Doug Walters running in second. Deardall now third. Keel goes very low on one, slowing it down a little bit, trying to yank it out again in the straightaway, and he seems to have the ability to do so. Walters second, but now you see Deardall moving up alongside of him, trying to take over second place. Jerry Deardall down along the rim of the track. Slides out high, just right alongside Walters, who tipped up on one ski. Ron Keel still leading. Ron Keel Jr. Mark Gullmeyer is running fourth. Go ahead. Ron Keel Jr. doing good on uh, Friday's qualification, winning all his heats and semis, and we see him leading this race right now. Jerry Deardall now comfortably in second. And Mark Gullmeyer trying to move up. He's in fourth. And Ron Keel is running a Polaris Indy Trail Deluxe, and the other sleds in this race are, the, of course, the Arctic Cats. And Jay. Jerry Deardall gaining on him a little bit. Keel seems to be slowing way down in the corners. Deardall not quite so much, and he makes his move and passes in the corner. Let's see what happens on the back straightaway. Deardall right there with Keel. Keel inching out a little ways, but it'll tighten up on the corners again. Ron seems to be closing way down low. Ron has a slightly larger engine in this class, but, but it's also a slightly larger machine, a bit heavier and harder to corner. Deardall staying right with him, looking for his best opportunity to pass and hang on to a lead. And it seems to be on this end, you see him go right next to Ron Keel, breathing down his neck. And of Keel, course, stronger horsepower, pulls it out on the back stretch. And of course, these are performance-rated machines. That's why we have different displacements running in the same class. Again, Keel to the inside, Deardall to the outside, battling here in Stock E on Championship Sunday. And it's still Ron Keel holding him off as much as he can. Deardall had the lead for a brief moment, a couple laps back, and he's trying to get back into that position again. Deardall using the ability of his Arctic Cat Jake to swoop down on the inside of this track and, and try to make a difference at catching Ron Keel Jr. Keel riding that Polaris, and he's got the lead. We got one lap to go as they come down the straightaway. Ron Keel Jr. has one more to go. Jerry Deardall right behind him. This is where Deardall is going to have to make his move. He comes around a little bit too high, and he's lost some ground on Ron Keel Jr. Coming out turn number two. The distances are pretty well stated right now. All sleds still running in this race. And coming around the corner on the north end with the light shining, it's going to be Ron Keel Jr. of Madison winning in stock E. Jerry Deardall is second. Doug Walters is third. And number 728, that's Bill Brown in fourth. Kent Lee on the outside. Jim Morgan in there trying to get a good hole shot. Pat Deshane and Dana Payne going right to it. Deshane takes the second round, and Dana Payne in the bright pink comes out as the leader in the straightaway. Being challenged, though, from the inside right away by Ron Keel Jr. He's got that victory uh, fever <laughs> carrying him here as he gets out to a quick start again. Dana Payne slides back in front. As they come out of corner number four, it's Keel and Payne right neck and neck. And a big group bunched up in the third spot, too, including Rick Haig and Pat Deshane. So and it looked like Jim Morgan's right in there. Jimmy leading him out as he's in third. Dana Payne is the leader. And we have the two Polaris Indies out front right now with uh, being chased by Jimmy Morgan on his Yamaha. Ron Keel Jr. Uh, racing on adrenaline right now as he just won in stock E, trying to make it back to back in stock D. Dana Payne the leader. Jim Morgan is in third. Rick Haig is fourth. Pat Deshane is fifth. Britt Broman is sixth. And then we add a few other drivers. Can't lead way back. Payne has about a three-length lead on Ron Keel Jr. That'll narrow as they hit the other end, although it actually spread a little bit. Keel trying to stay close right now on a bump. Broman almost got tossed overboard. He regains his balance and gets it back down on the track. That's Rick Haig, rather. A little tussle there with Jimmy Worgen. Jim now pursuing uh, the second place, being held by Ron Keel Jr. All sleds still running. 
and pretty well spread out. We're in stock D here on Championship Sunday at the 29th Annual Valvoline World Championship Snowmobile Derby. And the leader, as you're looking at him, is Dana Payne out of Buffalo, Minnesota. Ron Keel Jr. is second. Jim Morgan is third. Rick Haig is fourth. Pat DeShane running in fifth. And it's getting bumpy in number one. Some of these guys are really getting tossed over. Track is starting to get a little rougher as the day progresses, but uh, right now it seems to be no problem. Drivers are handling quite well. See Jimmy Morgan trying to move up here and Ron Keel Jr. And it's Dana Payne leading. Keel is second, Oregon is third. Rick Haig closing a little bit for fourth. Pat Shane still a fifth. And you see Rick Haig bouncing but getting closer to Jim Oregon. Jimmy takes a look over that right shoulder and sees what his competition is doing. He'll try to adjust as they hit the corners on the north end of the oval. Ted has a white flag out for Dana Payne and Ron Keel Jr. ranked first and second. And that's the way they stack up. Keel still about 20 yards behind, or rather 20 feet, we should say. Trying to get closer, but I don't think Dana Payne's going to give up any ground if he doesn't have to. Dana he checks into that screen just to make sure right. everything is reading right. You betcha. Dana Payne running a really hard race out here, but we see Ron Keel Jr. putting the push on in turn number four. He's coming almost even with him. Keel on the inside. It's a Payne drag on the race. Outside. It's going to be Dana Payne, Payne by half a length. Ron Keel with a strong finish for second. Jim Morgan third. Rick Haig fourth. Pat DeShane in fifth. Morgan has the inside position. Dana Payne gets a good start, but Ron Keel is right in the middle of everything. He and Morgan will race to the corner. Keel gets inside. Morgan has to hit the brakes. Now they pinch him a little bit and a bump, and there goes oh. Jim Morgan. And that took Dana Payne as well. And Lanny Benoit leads this race coming down the back straightaway. Dana Payne and Jim Morgan both got knocked out. And we're going to get a red flag. But Jimmy Morgan took a mighty bump right through that corner. Dana Payne gets off to a good start. Ron Keel right in there with him again, and Lanny Benoit and Keel will point to the inside and take him around. Dana Payne inside of Ron Keel, and Dana's got the lead coming out of number two. Ron Keel Jr. in second, Lanny Benoit in third. Jim Morgan hanging in there for fourth. DeVault moving down low on the inside, trying to make up some ground, and again, you see them kind of taking a shot and them moving in there. Lanny Benoit comes away with second. He cut in front of Ron Keel. Dana Payne being challenged now by Lanny Benoit. And look at Lanny slide right around him. Dana knows he's there, takes it from the inside out, and keeps his lead, but it's going to be challenged in the backstretch. Here Lanny comes goes Lanny right Benoit. outside him. Jim Worgen riding side by side with Ron Keel in a battle Ooh. for third. Yeah. Lanny bouncing higher. Dana sliding him out a little bit further, trying to squeeze him a little bit. But Lanny's got better speed in the straightaway. He'll Lanny. get in front of Dana this time. Lanny getting ahead of him just to touch head him, coming in turn number one, and they're side by side. Here comes Dana Payne pulling a little bit out. Now Lanny goes by Dana down that back straightaway. And Jerry Deardall had to slow down as to avoid a collision in the corner on number one last time. He's in fifth place challenging Jim Morgan. Here's Lanny Benoit, the leader. Dana Payne chasing. Ronald Keel is third. Jim Morgan is fourth. And now DeVault is fifth, and Deardall is sixth. And here we come. Dana Payne overtakes Lanny Benoit. Coming out of turn number two again. Well, Lanny they're, go ahead. they're even pretty much in the backstretch. The corners have a lot to do with who comes out on top. Lanny goes down low, then swings high. Dana goes high and swings low. He's on the inside. Benoit to the outside. Lanny's still the leader. They're just trying different strategies, hoping to throw the other one off. Ron Keel's still hanging back in third. We're getting close behind him in fourth. Dana to the inside, still chasing the backside of Lanny Benoit. Lanny seeming to have a bit of a speed advantage over Dana Payne as he go down that back straighter. Dana catching just a bit on Lanny as he runs through the corner. Lanny has a little bit more lead this time all the way around. Yeah. Lanny able to stretch that to go. lead out. Dana Payne is second. Ronald Keel Jr. is third. Jim Worgen is fourth. Not much change in that lineup. DeVault is fifth. They're all sixth. Everybody's still running here. Dana Falling a little bit further behind. Lanny going very high that time in number four, but still has the lead with one lap to go. Lanny Benoit and Dana Payne in stock C, one and two. Ron Keel is third. He's already got one checkered flag to his credit in mod two. As they make their way on the straightaway, Dana trying to close the gap. Maybe 
just maybe Lanny will have a problem in the final turns. Dana Doesn't appear to, though. Dana running as hard as he can in that corner, but Lanny's going to take the checker flag for the win in Stock C Racing today. Lanny Benoit and Dana Payne are one and two. Ron Keel is three. Jim Morgan is four. Ed DeVault is five. Drivers again position yourself, setting the sleds, and we've got a race. Nicholson has a good start, and he'll take the inside rim on the turn. Whether or not he can get the lead coming out of there remains to be seen. Dana Payne sliding up from the inside, right back in it. But Nicholson has the lead as we start in the first lap of this Stock B final on Championship Sunday at the Valvoline World Championship Snowmobile Derby. As they fly around the corner, a little more speed in this group. And that's Chris Brown running in second. Dana Payne is third right now and being challenged on the outside. Nicholson, the leader, going very high and getting hung up a little bit in some dust. And we got a sled running up there. One driver came off early. The second one came off just before his sled went to the bales, and we'll get a red flag. We've got hay bales on the track. Head spacing these drivers, so everybody's got a clean shot at that first corner. And we've got okay. a race again. Got Uselbinger here on the outside. So Nicholson will pick up where he left off, being chased again. And you see Dana moving right up inside on him. And it looks as if Guy Uslinger moving into fourth position, challenging for third right now. So there he goes, Guy on the inside, up into third position behind Dana Payne. He saw a hole and went for it and got in there. Now he's going to have to w fight to stay there. Nicholson leading. Dana Payne is second. Chris Brown is third. Dinger is fourth. But Guy taking a high line this time. Chris Brown had to close down a little bit so he wouldn't run into Dana Payne. And there's Useldinger moving to the inside, still in fourth. Dale Inbeck behind him in fifth. Then DeVault sixth and Spitzer seventh. Wayne Nicholson leads the pack as they come out of turn number four on a high groove. Eric has been running pretty well here so far. He's the leader. Dana Payne right behind him. And now you see a strong move as Dinger's gotten into third. Chris Brown stepped back to fourth. Useldinger now has moved up a notch. Dale Lindbeck running fifth, DeVault sixth, Spitzer seventh. Eric Nicholson, the leader, up on the north end of the track. Again, Eric is the nephew of Wayne Nicholson, who we'll see out here later racing today. Useldinger running behind Dana Payne. Guy is in third. Chris Brown is fourth. Dana slowing down a little bit in that corner. All sleds running, though, after that restart. This is stock B, the final. Couple laps to go for Eric Nicholson as he hangs on high at number four. Staying a little bit wider now, all the way down. And Guy Uselsdinger running third position, pushing hard, trying to make up ground on Dana Payne. And you see a great big group of drivers and pit crew people watching over in that second turn. Everybody's getting more and more interested as the racing afternoon progresses. We've got some big ones still coming. Right now, our attention is on Eric Nicholson, who leads in stock B with one lap remaining. And that's uh, second place right now, Dana Payne, who got up on one ski a little bit. Guy Uselsdinger running third. The guy hanging in there, hoping that he'll get a chance to do something good in this race. He's had a lot of bad luck, misfortune here on the weekend. And now you see Dale Lindbeck passing and Chris Brown and moving into fourth. Every little bit helps when you're trying to catch up. And coming down to get the checkered flag, it's Eric Nicholson winning in stock B. Dana Payne is second. Guy Uselinger is third. Keith Young gets off to a very good start. You see Trap in the middle. Herzig is on the inside, but that's Keith Young who cuts in front of everyone. Along the low rim, Keith Young will pull it out of number two and take the lead in the back stretch. Jim Herzig giving chase. Brian Sturgeon on the inside, racing for that third position. You'll see him move up in a hurry and get down low on the turn. And a strong move will put him in second as they come out of the corner. Keith Young is the leader right now. 
Brian, Brian Sturgeon running second and Jim Herzig in third position. Sturgeon just passed on the outside. We've got sleds trading places on the inside and now Brian Sturgeon is the leader. Keith Young running in second. No, Jim Herzig running second. Yeah, Keith, you're right. Keith Young has moved all the way to the back of the pack, so apparently some type of problem with Keith there in that number two corner. So a lot of Articats right there. Brian Sturgeon, the leader, Herzig with Nicholson. That's Wayne on the inside. Wayne Nicholson charging hard in that turn number one to take second position away. If he can Herzig. hold it, though, Herzig comes flying out of the corner. Herzig oh. going very fast down that back straightaway. A lot of competition in this one right now. And Herzig backing off a little bit in the corner, taking a lower line while Wayne Nicholson soars around the outside, and he's in second, We're chasing half Brian Sturgeon. Halfway through this race, Ted has the halfway signal out to these drivers. Trap is fourth, Benoit is fifth, DeVault sixth, and now, as you mentioned, Keith Young had him led his last. So Keith going from first position to last all in one quarter, so things changed rapidly on this racetrack. The leader right now, Brian Sturgeon, racing very well. Brian, of course, from Burnsville, Minnesota. Nicholson is second, Herzig is third, and a little slowdown that time for Wayne, but look at him jump out of the corner and try and catch him. Wayne really wants this one bad. Wayne running really hard in that turn number three. Watch him pick up some ground as he goes into turn number three, cutting it down the inside of Brian Sturgeon as he come out of turn number four, cutting that lead. You can see Wayne's strategy worked very well that last time. He dropped some speed, but he gained some ground. He's second right now, and look at him do it again, and there he's he going to be close in the back stretch. He's coming Nicholson. up within a machine length of he's, Brian Sturgeon. He's cutting a length down for every half length of the oval. There he goes again on the inside. Nicholson to the inside, Brian Sturgeon to the outside, and here they come. And Wayne's got it. Wayne's got a little bit of a bounce. One, One lap, lap to go. go. In stereo. They continue it. Nicholson leading around the corner. Sturgeon wants it back, and he'll go low. Sturgeon I don't know if he's low. got the speed. He lost a little bit right there. Sturgeon got a little loose coming out of turn number two. Wayne pilks up about two more sled lengths. He's going to have this race. Jim Herzig still third. Lanny Benoit having sled problems and coming down to get the checkered flag with a great passing move. The winner, Wayne Nicholson in stock A. Brian Sturgeon is second. Jim Herzig is third. Brian Trap, Trap is fourth. And that's Duvall fifth. What a great passing move there by Wayne. Excellent race put out there by Brian Sturgeon and Wayne Nicholson. The Pro Sprint class features a sort of hybrid machine with a chassis that meets the super modified criteria and yet sports a certified stock engine. Pro Sprint is 56 horsepower limited engines. Open and away chassis. we go, and look at Mike Hool jump out of there. We'll see if he's uh, recklessly abandoning everything and going for that hole shot as he did. And you see him take the lead out of number two. So Mike Hool off to a good start. Mike Hool having no problem negotiating that first turn in one and two, and here he comes in the three and four, doing a great job, able to handle that machine yet. We've got four sleds bunched up, trying to get a rasp, uh, grasp on second place, and that's Bob Royston with it right now. Ferguson up there, but Schroeder and Avi right on his trail. That's Schroeder to the inside. Avi coming down extremely low, and he's right even. Three sleds neck and neck. Royston pulls away a little bit in uh, second place, but Mike Hool is the leader coming back from a shoulder separation yesterday and looking strong. Houle, then Royston, Schroeder, Ave, Ferguson, Severson, Lehman, and a little further back, Benner. And again, Mike Houle's in a position to be if you've got a sore shoulder and less visibility than before. And here comes Tony Ave moving into third position. He made his move in that corner and into the straightaway, and he's now third, but here comes Schroeder right back after him. Ave setting his sights on Second place, Bob Royston from Walterboro, New Hampshire. But right now, Mike Houle owns a spotlight with a big lead out in first. And Ted has just signaled all the drivers are halfway through this race. But look at the lead Mike Houle has on the second place machine, having no problem. He just uh, lapped Jack Benner, who's got a sled problem, and he's along the boards. Mike Houle just breezing through it. Here's Bob Royston with a bigger lead in second now. And we've got a real battle for third. Schroeder now in third. And Tony Ave dropped way back and pointing his finger at somebody. So I don't know if he felt that there was an injustice, but uh, he had his finger pointing. 
And Mike Hool coming around here without a problem, way out front, leading this race. We saw Mike slide just a little bit, uh, a little bit loose in turn one and two. We almost had a collision up here on number four, Schroeder and Severson now challenging. Ferguson right behind him, Ollie trying to close the gap. And look at him running right up behind Ferguson and right around him almost. Mike Hool still our leader. Here he comes, Tony Avi charging back, trying to get some of the positions back that was lost earlier in this race. And we have one white flag out, one lap to go. And a blustery Sunday, Royston trailing Mike Hool, and he's lapped Benner a second time. Schroeder is third, Severson fourth, and Avi coming back hard. Avi not happy out there. We see him signaling to Ted. Uh, he must have had a confrontation in the corner. And here we have the checker flag of Ooh, Mike Hool. He, he just bounced against Severson. Mike Hool winning right here. Bob Royston will come around. Ave bumped into Severson on that back stretch right alongside of him. Royston is second. And Schroeder is going to be third. Ave fourth. Severson fifth. time for the big ones and formula three is truly the muscle sled with the largest engine and horsepower allowances formula threes are capable of the highest speeds possible for racing sleds however their single track design and heavier weight prevent the acceleration and high speed cornering known to the formula one class we're getting set for 15 laps in formula three in the final and the Valvoline World Championship Snowmobile Derby in Eagle River. We're going to have a start here momentarily. We've got to start. Steve Hull off to a good one. Steve Hull with a checkered vest. That's Hull on the inside. Wojciechowski stepped in front of him. All the sleds running. we got a big dust. Jim Appleson taking over the lead out of turn number two. With Steve, Steve Hull right, right beside there. him. And you see that's uh, Tim Bender. right behind him. Bender up there on the third slot in the corner. Steve, Steve Hull down, down low in the rim, and he'll take it out of there. Appleson on the outside is the leader. One lap in. Tim Bender moves into second position. That's Cut. Steve Hull down low, and he's in third right now. Appleson trying to make his way to get back in there. Bender is the leader. Bender carving tight on the inside of Appleson on turn number two, takes the lead down the back straightaway, down tight on turn number four. Tim Bender leads this race, second lap. Tim Bender is out in front. Steve Hull right behind him. Mike Sackett is in third. Hull has actually dropped back to fourth. That's Appleson in second. And Sackett that's in third. Sackett in third, right. Steve Hools dropped back to fourth. Uselsdinger is now running fifth. Right now, Tim Bender is our leader coming out of number four. Team Yamaha looks to be looking for first and second, but Jim Appleson is in that position at this time. Bender, Appleson, and Sackett, and Sackett now moving up and trying to get into second place on the inside of Appleson. Sackett driving really hard. Watch him use his speed advantage as he go down the back straightaway. This is coming up. All sleds still running, but they're spread out quite wide. Tim Bender is our leader, Sackett on the inside, Appleson to the outside, and Sackett may try and pinch him this time. Four laps, Sackett down tight. Up on one speed. Sackett comes out on the inside, roaring up along and in front, and he's passed for second. Look at him go after first. Watch Appleson, high on the outside, going past Sackett, trying to catch Tim Bender. That's Appleson very high, and he's using uh, Sackett, but now Sackett is the leader, and they both pass Tim Bender. Tim Bender's machine not sounding right as he came down this front straightaway. That's Appleson's five laps. staying high, and he'll stay behind. There are no Sackett and Appleson really battling out on that back straight. Tim Bender definitely having problems on yeah, the back shoot. you can shoot. see it. It's cutting out. Guy Uselsdinger moving up, and he slid sideways and had to hit the brakes. Sackett gets the lead here and holds it against Jim Appleson. Sackett and Appleson just dueling it side by side. There is an inches between them. That's Tim Bender going out. Brian Sturgeon is running fourth. Guy Useldinger is third. Wojciechowski and Steve Hull. Right now it's Sackett and Appleson along that corner number three. Watch Appleson running a high line trying to keep all the speed he can as he comes out of turn number four. They're halfway, halfway. through. Halfway through and Sackett and Appleson are one and two with Guy Useldinger third. Brian Sturgeon is running in fourth. Steve Wojciechowski running a fifth, Steve Hull sixth. There we go, Sackett's using that uh, power advantage again as they run down the straightaway. And look at Useldinger catching up to Jim Appleson in corner number three. Guy Useldinger really charging hard in the latter part of this race. 
There's our leader, Sackett, Dinger, right up there with Appleson. Guy Useldinger right behind him, and now we got laughing traffic to be aware of. Guy Useldinger in second position. He just overtook Sackett in turn number one. Guy Useldinger coming on strong from Grand Forks, North Dakota, and now he'll give chase to the leader. Guy Useldinger is going to catch up on Sackett. He's really reeling him in here as they come out. Turn number four. Sosie is right in the way. Mike Sackett's going to have to negotiate Sosie right in the way, and they'll slow him down for Dinger. There he goes. Here's Ah, uh, Guy had to wait up for Sosie. Sosie's got to get out here of the goes, way. Here goes Dinger passing Sackett down the back straightaway. Guy Useldinger just took over. we got to get those slower vehicles to the outside of the track, and they're not cooperating. Here comes Dinger, Sackett on the inside. Guy Useldinger, the new leader. Ten laps finished. Two Guy thirds of the way through the race. Appleson is now running in third. Guy Useldinger's making up for all that bad luck earlier in the weekend. And he's coming on strong, too. Jim Appleson running third. Guy Uzdinger, Formula Mach 1X, just performing flawlessly out here. And remember, he got in in the last chance gas, making a strong comeback. Dinger, Sackett, and Appleson, one, two, and three in Formula 3. Ha uh, Dinger had to start from that second row as quite a disadvantage. Jim Appleson trying to catch up to Mike Sackett in second place. What? Steve Hull, very slow on the inside rim, right trying now, to stay out of the way. Excuse me, Bruce. Right now, one of the reasons we see Dinger Ding doing so well, endurance, driver endurance, is starting to take effect. He hasn't been out there quite as much. Other guys all in Sackett. This is his only race today. He's running second, Appleson third. Guy Uso Dinger is a big, strong, and in excellent condition. Guy Uso Dinger takes it around. Now Sackett trying to come back on him a little bit from Sa the inside. Dinger holding him off. Lap 13 finished. Two to go for Dinger. Two laps remaining. Formula 3 shootout here, the battle of the brands, and Skidoo is winning right now. And we have Jim Appleson moving up on Sackett right now. Jim Appleson really charging hard on this back straight. He is going to overtake Sackett in turn number three. Jim Appleson coming back strong right now. Dinger's going to have to watch out for slow guys in front of him. One lap to go coming out to Dinger. One lap to go. Appleson in second. Guy Sackett Dinger in third. Has to negotiate around those other sleds, and that may slow him down. Look at Appleson blazing up there. This is our last lap, checkered flag lap, and Guy Uzdinger easily in first position. And now here comes Sackett. And that's right. had to wait up for that other sled, and they still won't get out of his way. Side by side through turns three and four, Sackett and Appleton. Here comes the Formula 3 winner. Guy Uzdinger. He's got it. Mike Sackett. Formula Sackett, three. Sackett is second. Appleton is third. The Formula One sleds were made for the racetrack. Although the maximum engine size of 340cc is close to half of the largest Formula 3s, these twin track machines with a steering clutch make up in quick acceleration and cornering what they lack in overall muscle. This makes Formula One the fastest oval racing class of the World Championship Derby weekend. Looking for the pole position. Gary will take it around the corner. That's Decker Town Low. And Gary Vassar leads him out of number two. He's out in front with a big bunch up in there. That's now Chuck Decker to the inside. You see Goodwin and Bruce Vassar, I believe, right up there, too. Greg Goodwin flying very high around the corner. Both SO machines running in second and third, respectively. That's right. That's Chris Van Dolder running second, but Chuck Decker has the inside nod. So you could call him the second place sled as he comes out of number two. He is. Gary Vassar running extremely well as he circulates this track in first position entering turn number three was Chuck Decker following close. Chris Van Dolder is third and it's Bruce Vassar in fourth. Greg Goodwin is fifth and Scott Mon is sixth. Well, Josh Nev is sixth. Right now, Gary Vassar, the leader, as they go around number one. And Chuck Decker trailing him in the Van Dolder and Bruce Vassar. Now Greg Goodwin has moved into third. Greg with that commercial sawing bib. He's now the third place sled. Right now it's Barry Vassar and Chuck Decker, one and two. Good one is third, Van Dolder is fourth, Bruce Vassar is fifth, John Villeneuve sliding inside is sixth. And Gary Vassar doing a superb job as he circulates this track in his number one position on his number one Camel Plast sponsored Skidoo Formula One. At the other end, that's Alan Decker running last and he's just not getting it to come out the way he wanted it to. Gary Vassar the leader, Chuck Decker running second. 
Good one is third. Van Olders passing him from the outside. Brewster's there right behind in fifth. And he almost ran into the back of Goodwin. Take a look. Chucky seems to be closing the gap on uh, Gary Vassar. Greg Goodwin not very uh, much ahead of Chris Van Older to the outside up there. You see them neck and neck on the rim. Five laps down as Gary Vassar crosses the start finish line. So we're 20% through this one. Goodwin to the inside, Van Older to the outside. Now Van Older got in ahead of him. And it's Goodwin along the inside though, pulling it out of the corner. All 11 sleds still going. Greg Goodwin and uh, battling hard with Van Doler. You see Chuck Bruce trying to Bessere. shave a little space on the inside of that rim. Looks back, he's got a lot of room between himself and Goodwin and Van Doler. Bruce Bessere is fifth. Jack Gilmez has now slipped back a notch as Mondes moves up. Chuck Decker seems to close the gap as they go through turns one and two. Gary stretches out down the back straight, but Chuck running extremely hard again. It's time to keep your eye on Dale Loritz. He has moved Start. up considerably, and he's ahead of Jacques Villeneuve, and he's chasing Bruce Messier right now. Dale Loritz is sixth, and he's moving up hard. This is his kind of race, a little more time, and he'll let the cloud uh, get in front of him, and then he'll take him. But again, right. Gary and Chuck are one and two. Goodwin is third, Van Dolder is fourth, Bruce Vassar fifth, and there's Dale Loretz right behind him. That's eight laps down in this 25 lap feature race. Jerry Vassar has a good line, he's kept in it all the way through. Chuck Decker trying to gain on him, coming out of number two. Again, Chuck really seems to make up ground as they go through one and two, but Gary able to stretch it out down the back straightaway and a touch quicker as he comes out of turn number four. We've got four sleds bunched up there on that north end, and you see Loretz tailing in the back, but he's coming on. Gary Vassar and Chuck Decker, Goodwin, Van Dolder, Bruce Vassar, Dale Ritz and Jacques Villeneuve in the front half. Mondes, Ludwig, Ave, and Alan Decker a ways back. And again, the real race is right in third position. They're changing. Uh, Van Dolder just moved ahead of Goodwin. Oh, Van turned. Dolder spins out. Oh, nobody hit him, but fortunately for him, he turns it around. Goodwin is third, Villeneuve is fourth, Vassar is fifth, and Loritz is sixth. And Gary Vassar still Leading this race ahead of Chuck Decker, but Chuck right there. It's almost incredible that we didn't have a collision up there. Oh. Alan Decker will be the first man to be lapped today. Superb driving by all those drivers. Jerry Vassar and Chuck Decker are one and two. Greg Goodwin, the defending champion, is running third. That's Jack Villeneuve running fourth. Loritz now is inside of Bruce Vassar for fifth. Dale Loritz charging hard from here on in. And he just passed Vassar. He is now fourth. And Gary Vassar comes down here to take the green flag on lap number 12. Halfway through, Chuck Decker running second. And in third, it's Greg Goodwin, but he's being challenged right now. Jacques Villeneuve and Dale Loritz, who's running fifth. And Gary Vassar just, just lapped Alan Decker. Jacques is right on the heels of Greg Goodwin in third. And look at him go along the outside. Here comes Gary Vassar, he's leading. That's Allen to the inside. Here's Chuck Decker running second. That's right. Gary has a bit more of a comfortable lead over Chuck Decker. He's been able to stretch that out the last two laps. Jack Villeneuve is getting set to pass Greg Goodwin in the corner. Let's see if he can do it. Not quite. Dale Loritz is right there behind him, too. Gary He's running fifth. Gary Vassar comes by on lap number 14. Sled is running flawlessly. Chuck Decker out there, he's doing pretty well too. He's hoping Gary has a problem somewhere along the line. Goodwin is third, Villeneuve is fourth, Moritz is fifth. Jock is right behind Greg Goodwin. If there's a mistake, Jock will have him. Ludwig now will be uh, lapped pretty soon. Gary Vassar is our leader. Lap number 15, Gary Vassar is just completed with Chuck Decker right behind him. Chucky is a little ways back. Jock Villeneuve is now third. Dale Loritz is fifth, but he's pressing on Goodwin, and we'll see if he moves up. Takes a high line out of one into two, and right on the back stretch, there he is. Here comes Gary, still our leader. He has been from the opening goal, actually the third goal. Gary Vassar having to deal with some back markers. He'll go by Avi now. As he comes by Tony Avi in turn number two. Bruce Vassar hasn't given up. He's still chasing Loretz. Here Gary. comes Gary Vassar. He's our leader on the inside. That's Gary right there. Tony Ave has been lapped. Chuck Decker hanging right in there for second. Here's Greg Goodwin. Actually, Jacques Villeneuve running third. Goodwin is fourth. Loris is fifth. Jacques a long ways back, though. Yeah, Jacques's got a lot of ground to make up. Gary coming around number four. Chuck is in the north end. Here's Gary Vassar still leading. Tony Ave looking to see where everybody's at. There's Chuck Decker. He's running second. Gary Vassar circulating this track without any problems on his Camo Class Skidoo Formula One sled. 
Greg Goodwin is third, now Loritz is fourth, and Jacques has a problem. So Goodwin is third, but Loritz is right on him. Gary Vassar had to slow up and turn number four to avoid some of these back markers. Gary is still our leader, but now he almost ran into another slide. That's Ludwig, and he gets down inside of him, and that might slow him down a little bit. That's right. We got back markers all the way now. There's going to be traffic for Gary Vassar. And Chuck Decker, who got slowed up by the same guys. That's right. There's Goodwin and Loritz. They're third and fourth. We're watching Gary come out turn number four. The sleds are starting to get a little bit looser as these carbides and studs lose some of their sharpness. Gary Vassar is first. Ludwig just threw off something. His goggles. Chuck Decker is running second. Now we'll keep an eye on those guys. It's kind of hard to measure our third place sled. It's right here. Goodwin is third. Loritz is fourth. This They're is, a half lap behind. This though. is lap number 20 as Gary Masser comes out of turn number four. Right here is Gary. He's still leading. And here's Chuck Decker. He's still running second. Jock is done, it looks like. Scott Mondes was given the move over flag as Gary Masser passes him come out of turn number two. And he is still our leader. Chuck Decker has a wide open field ahead of him. Gary Vassar has approximately a full back straightaway on Chuck Decker right now. And almost three quarters a lap on his third place sled, Greg Goodwin. Look at Dan Gary Vassar's nose on his sled. The nose has broken off and is tipped down. That could be a problem as it covers the radiator up and may allow the engine to overheat. So keep an eye on Gary Vassar's nose. All right, Chuck Decker's still about a third of a lap behind him. If he can catch him, time is running out. Gary is definitely slowing down up here on the north end. Gary needs that, uh, uh, yes, look at this, completely closed off. The front of the machine is completely closed off the air vent to the radiator. Chuck Decker has to go away to catch him, but Gary is slowing down in the corners, and you can see he's having troubles with that sled. Gary Chuck Decker is gaining a little bit. Gary's engine is starting to overheat and lose horsepower. Gary would be better if the whole hood would break right off. Lap number 20. 24. He's got one lap. One lap to go. It won't take long now. He ought to just hope that that engine hangs on. One lap remaining. Jerry Vassar makes his way around the back stretch. Look at the hood on that machine. Completely tucked under. Rolled right under the front of the machine. Looks like a little pug-nosed bulldog. Yes, sir. Get ready to and welcome this is home it. Gary the world Vassar. champion from Honey Harbor, Gary Vassar, a first-time winner. Coming down to get second will be Eagle River's Chuck Decker. There's Greg Goodwin for third. Dale Loritz takes fourth. And that's going to do it. Gary Vassar, the 1992 Valvoline World Champion Snowmobile Formula One driver, and his first ever. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this videotape of the 1992 Eagle River World Championship races. It was produced in cooperation with Dakar Racing Enterprises and WSAW-TV of Wausau, Wisconsin. This tape is intended solely for the viewing pleasure of its audience. Any unauthorized duplication or use of this program is prohibited and is a violation of copyright laws. Additional copies may be obtained by writing to this address. We look forward to comments or suggestions and hope to see you next year.